Hi guys, welcome to Bangkok. Uh, in this video, we're going to work with Sony because I've been working with Sony lately. Here's my friend Sebastian, who's uh, going to be our model for today. And we're going to look for good looking light. And then we're going to go to the computer and do some simple color correction for the footage to see how good it looks. After that, you'll, I'll share a free lot with you guys in the end of the video. So stay tuned. Okay, let's go look for good light. So here we are shooting in a low light situation and I'm using the S-Log2 profile and to prevent a lot of noise from ending up in a footage I'm overexposing the S-Log a lot. Uh, I'm not going to go uh, too deep on that topic of, topic of exposure now, but just that know that I'm going to have a, like an in-depth course on how to shoot with Sony soon, so subscribe to the channel to see that. Okay, we might find something interesting here, almost like a soft box, like a, it's a box. And then we have a lot of soft light coming from here. So the larger the area that the, the light is reflecting from, the softer the light is. So now I'm going to look at your face and maybe look to find some kind of a, like interesting light plus interesting background. And we have the king of Thailand there on the background. I guess you need to go. Yeah. Thank you very much for helping. Thank you. We'll continue uh, just in a second. So we are no longer in Bangkok. We came to south of Thailand to an island Koh Cham. And let's now, now let's go to the computer and let's do the color correction part. Okay, let's do the computer part. First, I'm going to show you a method that you should not use. Normally, if you go to YouTube and look for how to color correct log footage, you find this. First, add a lot of contrast, bring your highlights up, bring your, bring your blacks down, and then add a lot of saturation. And this will give you like, okay, no, not really. It doesn't really give you good colors. For example, here, the skin tones have this weird green cast and the saturation hue in the footage is all over the place. And there's a simple reason why you can't get a good uh, image out of log footage just using these simple sliders. And that is that log footage uh, is shot into a different color space than we uh, use on internet on, on, or on YouTube. So to be able to get good colors out of log footage, you need to do color space transforms. I squeeze them in into a lot and that I can easily use in, for example, in Premiere. So, here, let's go and look for that one LUT. And this LUT I'm going to give you uh, for free in the end of the video. Oh, actually, I have some other LUTs for S-Log2, but let's l use the look number one now. So with this, you get a nice color, uh, like uh, straight out of the, like just applying this one LUT. So you don't you don't have the uh, weird uh, green skin tone and the saturation on the, uh, in the leaves and on neutral areas are correct. And uh, then, uh, in this case, the footage looked, just happened to look good straight out of the camera just by applying the LUT. But uh, sometimes you might not have, you might not be as lucky. For example, here's an uh, image uh, from Sebastian in, in these LED lights. There was this colorful LED lights shining onto his uh, face. And in this case, if we just apply this LUT, uh, it looked kind of okay, but I think the skin tones are too much ender and it's slightly underexposed. So uh, now after applying the LUT, I'm going to go and before the LUT, meaning that the order of operation is important. So I first I apply the LUT, but before the LUT, I kind of uh, do some tweaking to the image. So not after the LUT, before the LUT. So here I'm going to uh, apply a bit of exposure up, something like this, and then I'm going to uh, use the uh, temp uh, tint and temperature sliders to kind of play around with the white balance a bit. And this works much better when you do this before the LUT, before you kind of, before the colors go through the LUT. So I'm first I'm modifying this, and then on this creative tab, I'm gonna apply the LUT. So this way you can kind of, if you didn't shoot perfectly on set, you can still tweak your footage to get really nice colors with this LUT. And then, as I said before, that you need to, um, you need to overexpose your S-log uh, quite a lot uh, when you're shooting. I uh, prefer overexposing two stops when I'm doing, uh, when I'm shooting my S-Log. 
and uh, this footage was not actually uh, overexposed, but this was uh, shot with a normal exposure, uh, at least based on the camera's uh, light meter. And in this case, if I apply the LUT, the image ends up looking very dark. And of course, I can go here in the sliders and just pump up the uh, like exposure up, but then we end up losing uh, uh, some of the highlight details. And if we go to the highlights and try to bring them down, we can, but still, we kind of lose uh, some of the highlight details. If I turn this uh, FX on, you can see that there's much more details there in the highlights. But that, well, like this, we'll uh, end up uh, losing uh, some of them. So if you have shot your S-Log without overexposing, I'm going to give you another LUT. So I'm going to give you two free LUTs. And the other free LUT is going to be for you to use, uh, like to, to mimic um, uh, overexposure in S-Log. For example, this was shot with the normal exposure, so exposure zero. And instead of applying the LUT directly, or even, you, even not using these sliders, I'm going to apply this exposure mimicking LUT. And uh, this is very accurate, so I'm going to use this plus one. And I have uh, the white balance mimicking LUTs here as well. But I'm going to just use this. And with this creative intensity, in the creative tab, with the intensity uh, slider, I can double it. So now, this uh, plus one mimicking exposure, one plus exposure mimicking LUT becomes plus two. So now we start at zero and then we uh, kind of overexpose it by two with this LUT. So now I'm going to go and uh, create a new instance of this Lumetri color effect. I'm going to reset it. And now we have this empty, this creative tab here. I'm going to go and find the LUT that we just used previously. And now I'll go and apply the same uh, look one LUT. And you can see that now we see into the highlights. So if we compare this to the slider one, uh, we lose some highlight details. But when we use this exposure plus LUT, we get better highlights and the skin tones uh, don't get oversaturated when you use this mimicking. So the best, uh, best scenario is always to shoot overexposed in camera. But if you didn't, you can use this other free LUT to uh, kind of mimic uh, overexposure if you, if you need to. Okay, then one more discovery that I want to share with you. Uh, here's a scene that I shot with S-Log uh, because I wanted to capture the whole dynamic range of the scene. And normally people say that S-Log has the best dynamic range. So uh, the shadow, the highlight area has all the details, so nothing is clipping, but the shadow is kind of dark. And when I do color correction, I can bring the shadows up uh, and still have the kind of highlight not clipping. But the problem with S-Log and the reason why you should overexpose it uh, is that when I bring up shadows in S-Log, you can see in, in this magnification that we get a lot of this nasty color blocking uh, in the shadow areas of S-Log. Uh, but you don't get this if you use some other uh, profiles, some uh, specific profiles in your camera. For example, this is Cine4, which I have color corrected with a special lookup table, and I'm bringing the uh, shadows up, and I'm still getting really nice colors out of the shadows. And when you compare this to S-Log, you see that the skin tones are more like smooth. There's not this um, kind of blocking uh, in, the, in the skin tones or in the shadow areas in general. And it seems to me, this is very subjective, but, subjective, but it seems to me that there's more shadow detail like here in the, in the, in the black hair in Cine4 when after using this lookup table than there is uh, in S-Log2. So these, from this, I would, it might even be that Cine4 seems to have more dynamic range than S-Log in the alpha cameras when they shoot with 8-bit. I don't know about the cinema cameras. The cinema cam cameras from Sony, probably S-Log works as it's supposed to be. But in these alpha cameras, S-Log2 seems to have, it seems to my eye that there's less dynamic, less dynamic range than in Cine4 when you carefully bring the uh, shadow areas up um, in, in post. So that's why I recommend you to overexpose S-Log and I recommend uh, overexposing by two stops because then you don't have this nasty shadow detail issues in S-Log. It would be nice to see what kind of footage you can do with this lookup table. So there's a link in the description and floating somewhere around me. Uh, go and get your free LUTs and subscribe to the channel because we'll be having more tutorials and videos about Sony very soon. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye.